What's going on guys? Jeff here, Corals Unlimited. Today we got a brand new video for you. We're going to be taking a look at our Nano Reef Tank build. More specifically, we're going to be adding something a little bit different. So we've added some inverts, we've added some fish, now it's time to add an anemone. But if this is your first time being here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love the reef tanks like I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every single time that I upload a new video. Let's jump into it. All right, so we are on a full week of having the new clownfish in the tank. Uh, we got the mocha storm and then a frostbite both bred here locally in Maine. Um, tanks starting to show a little bit of signs of algae. Uh, hermit crabs are still doing their thing. They've molted a few times and we lost one snail, but the other snail is still a trucking. There he is, he's up in that back corner there. All right, so today we're gonna be adding a rock flower anemone to the tank. And we're gonna talk about some of the things that I like to do when I add those. And also we're gonna kind of get into the subject of NEMS in general and kind of give you guys a heads up as to uh, what to consider when you're thinking about adding a NEM to your tank. So when we're talking about adding NEMS to a tank, you know, whether it's a bubble tip or rock flower or whatever, I usually like to add them to the tank before I add any corals. Now the thought behind this is NEMS will move around. Not so much your rock flowers, and that's kind of why we're deciding to go with the rock flower for the, the nano reef tank. But more specifically with bubble tips and other species of NEMS, uh, they do move around and can move around quite a bit. And usually when you add them to a tank for the first time, it isn't really going to go where you want them to go. They're going to go where they, they want to go, which is the best situation for them. Uh, it usually is a mix of food source, flow, and lighting. So for me, that's why I like to add NEMS to the tank first. So they kind of get in the tank, they get settled down, and then you can start adding corals. Bubble tips can continue to move around, especially if you start messing with the lighting schedule, uh, the light power, and also flow. Those things can kind of disrupt their kind of place where they've settled down. Another thing to consider too is as your corals start to grow and flow patterns start to change within the tank, that can also make a bubble tip just pick up and leave. So for me, Personally, I'm not a huge fan of bubble tips. And if I were to do a bubble tip tank, I'm probably gonna pick one showstopper bubble tip and have a tank dedicated to them. And that's, that's it. I really struggle with bubble tips and putting them into a mixed reef tank. I think that's a situation where you kind of have to be okay with the fact that they're gonna move around, they're gonna sting and kill corals. So you need to be aware of that before you add them to your tank. Now, the reason I prefer rock flowers over other types of NEMS is they don't move around as much. They tend to go where you want them to go and then they stay put. But I have seen in the past with some of our service tanks that have rock flowers in them that just out of nowhere, all of a sudden they start moving around. And again, that's an important thing to consider when adding them to a mixed reef tank that's going to have other corals within it. Now I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Now there's a lot of information on the internet out there saying that you should wait at least six months to add a NEM to your tank. Um, I personally have added NEMS to tanks relatively early for a long time. And I know that just kind of goes into the whole mishmash of things that happen on the internet and people finding conflicting information. I have literally taken 30 bubble tip anemones and threw them into a frag system that was not even cycled. And I didn't really think about it at first. I just needed a place to put them all. They were in baskets. They weren't just crawling all around. And then after the fact, thought about it. And I was like, that tank's not even cycled. And I didn't lose a single nap. And really ever since then, I have kind of gone with the mindset of getting them in the tank first, letting them settle down, and then adding your corals based around wherever the NEM sets up shop. Rock flowers specifically like to kind of be towards the bottom of the reef tank. They don't necessarily need a ton of par. They tend to do really well in that 100 to 150 par area. So if you have a area of your tank that isn't necessarily the most flow and not so well lit, these are a good option to kind of color up that area of the tank. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pick up a couple of rock flowers here from the store. We're actually gonna treat the situation as if they're bagged up and brought home uh, to help you guys out at home. And we're gonna to acclimate them and then add them to the tank. All right, so we just got back from the store. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, and we're, what we're gonna to do to acclimate these guys is we're just gonna go ahead and float the bag for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then we're going to remove the NEMS from the bag 
and it's really important when you're adding new critters to your tank, and I'm not even sure if I've talked about that on this build series yet, is that you're not getting any of the water that is from the store into your display tank. Uh, it's incredibly important. Doesn't matter who the fish store is, how great they are, um, how much you love the people that work there, it's really important to protect your tank and make sure that you're not going to be adding any nasties um, and potential problems to your tank. And the only way that you really can do that is by avoiding just adding tank water uh, from the store to your tank. Um, rock flowers don't need to be acclimated outside of a temperature acclimation. Um, NEMS in general, I've never acclimated it in NEM. I guess if you wanted to be super cautious and um, you know adjusting them slowly to the salinity, if there's a big difference between what you're keeping at home to what there is at the store, uh, but I think that you could cause more damage by putting them in the container, adding them to it, slowly adjusting the salinity, and then they have time enough, you know, in that 30 minutes to set up shop, they grab a hold of something, then you have to remove them, um, and then you're risking damaging the animal again, because um, they, they have a foot and that's how they attach themselves. So it's just best, in my opinion, to just really quickly take them out of the water, Make sure that you get as much of the shop water off your hands and then add them to your tank in the area that you think you want to add them. All right, so for a working bin, um, I get these at the dollar store. I think it's in like the cleaning section. I think it's like a camp dry sink. I don't know what it is, but um, love them. Absolutely love them. Got a ton of them, use them all the time. Uh, and they're cheap, they do break, but they're cheap. So. Uh, those are usually what I will process and dip corals in. Uh, this one has not seen any dip because I don't want to dip NEMS because that's going to uh, treat them pretty rough. So we want to make sure that we're using a bin that doesn't have any exposure to dip whatsoever. And all we're going to do is just go ahead, open the bag. Sometimes if they've had enough time to set up in the bag, um, they will be attached and if you just kind of flick it a little bit they'll become unattached. Um, you can see this guy's already trying to open up and we're just gonna go ahead get that water out of there and most NEMS won't sting you. Uh, that's not to say that they aren't kind of sticky so that's something that to be aware of. I usually um, when I handle bubble tips I will uh, use gloves. And then all we're gonna do is go ahead and place these guys kind of where we want them. If they have like a little piece of rock um, that they're attached to, like this one right here, that kind of helps a little bit with the with adding them to the tank. Kind of gives them a little bit of an anchor in a situation like with the other one that we have, which isn't attached to anything, uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to get them on the other side of the rock work over here. But you might protest a little bit. One thing that can help you when you are adding, actually I'm kinda, eh, see what happens with that. One thing that can help with getting these guys to kinda set up shop a little bit better is shutting off the flow to the tank. This Nano tank doesn't have the strongest stock pump, um, so it's not a huge deal to shut the flow off, but in a reef tank that has a lot of flow, I would recommend uh, shutting the flow off when you are adding uh, bubble tips or rock flowers to the tank, uh, just to give them time to attach their foot. And then once you see that they're kind of attached and you kind of can you know, wave your hand over them and they kind of have a little bit of a hold, um, then you can turn that flow back on and because you, you don't want to forget to turn that flow back on So this the little green guy uh, with the orange lips or orange mouth um, He is already kind of grabbing hold and then our other guy little red which we put right there uh, Is already starting to attach and you can see their foot kind of settling down um, And they will start to open up and then once they're fully attached they will be opened up uh, as long as the lights are on. And once we have them in place, uh, just go ahead, give your tank a little bit of a cleanup, any water that may have gotten splashed around, and then we'll turn the light back on, let these guys kind of settle in, 
clean up our mess. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes and we're opening up and we're pretty attached. Both these guys are looking pretty good. Adding NEMS to your nano reef tank doesn't have to be difficult or overwhelming at all. But if you want to learn more about nano reef tanks, check this video out. I will see you over there. All right, so camera on. Do we have sound? These are all very important things when you are trying to make a video and you keep messing up.